So a Japanese made watch, a good value Japanese made watch, it's called the Kua. It's inspired by an old Smith watch from an antique shop on Liverpool Street. What a cool bit of history, but is it any good? Let's take a closer look. So a Japanese man while studying in London went to an old antique shop and found a vintage Smith's watch, fell in love. And then many years later, the history of Kua began. 2020, we have from Makukaki, a Japanese version of Kickstarter, started this brand off. And here we have, this is one of their models. It's the old timer. So without waffling on for too long, we're gonna get stuck into the stats and specs of this piece. I hope you enjoy because um, it's a good little watch. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> So here it is on its standard strap. Uh, it does come with another strap actually. This is a, a black strap with these lovely brown leather keeps here. But I'll quickly show you the issue you get. I'll put this on my wrist and you'll see what I'm talking about. I've squeezed this on my wrist and it's just about, it's not gonna reach the second keep and there's not really enough of it to double fold back. Um, and it's a little bit rough this strap. It's a bit coarse around the edges, but at least it's a single pass. It doesn't add too much extra height to the watch. If you have Anything bigger wrist than me, I have a seven inch wrist, you're gonna have problems with this fitting you. But seeing as it's on a single pass NATO style strap, it's really easy to swap out, as you can see, 18 mil lug width. So I'll keep that off while I show you all the other dimensions, etc. So as I alluded to, it's got quick release spring bars, which is good if you wanna swap it out and put it on your own leather strap, an 18 mil one. It's easy to take these out and put them back in for putting your NATOs back on. Uh, screw case back and screw crown. So you've got the model number on name on the back. It's all polished, every surface is polished and it's all 316L stainless steel. It's nice to know it's got 100 meters water resistance or 10 bar is the equivalent. Um, it's great because you've got the screw down crown with hand winding for the movement. NH35 movement, which is great. It's not running too good actually in this one. Timekeeping is actually fantastic. It's just not very healthy. It's got a bit of a beat error going on there. I think it may have had a knock in transit. But it has come all the way from Japan, so I'm not surprised. That's the trouble with things coming a long way. You don't know how they were going to get treated in transit. But we've got a lovely three mil worth of domed mineral crystal here. And the total height of the watch here is 12.3. A really nice, decent lug to lug of only 42. So it's going to wear really well on your wrist. I mean, it's just, just like a little button on my wrist. It's lovely. And a lovely big dial, 29 mil. That dial is about the same, if not a bit bigger than the dials you get on a lot of 40 mil case size dive watches. So that's give you a perspective of why a small watch doesn't have to read small. So it's very clever. I'm gonna get this strap back on. It looks a bit weird holding it like this. So yeah, it's a 35 mil case, excluding the crown. It's a six mil crown, which is signed, which is very nice. It's a fingerprint and smudge magnet because it's all polished, but that definitely adds to this vintage aesthetic, it adds some class to it. And it's really good polishing. Hand assembled in Japan, as it says there, Japan made. And that's nice to know. Is it worth $278? Well, watch the rest of the video and just get a real good feel for the piece to see if these little details on top of the spec you're seeing now all add up to something you're happy to spend a bit more money on because this is a micro brand. It is made in Japan. They are sold in limited numbers. So it's that all pieces together to, as to why something costs what it costs. You know, they don't sell these by the bazillion, so they're not going to have the ability to charge you um, significantly less for them because it's it's a unique and interesting brand and it's nice that this has been inspired by an old smith's watch uh, hence the name old smith uh, and that's exciting and it's nice to have something that's been brought to modern spec you know the half decent loom it's okay it holds up for about five minutes of being legible and then it quickly dies off after that but like i say you've got decent enough loom you've got a modern movement you've got mineral instead of crystal or slash plexiglass from those kind of days you've got lovely distortion on there Really nice, smooth quality polishing, but you get the optional, uh, sort of the bonus of having screw down features such as this screw down crown and the screw down case back, which is all adding to 100 meters water resist, which is fantastic. And like I said, it comes with two straps, international warranty. It comes in a nice little box like this. With like a nice bit of felt going on in there or fuzziness. Um, it's really classy. It's got a, definitely a Japanese vibe to it, which is obviously what you want from a Japanese watch. It's a really nice set of specifications in keeping with obviously its price 
and the kind of prices people are willing to pay for this type of watch and it's a new brand it's a mechanical piece with nice vintage features if you will that are going to give it that look and feel and everything's been done to a good and high standard really good there's no there's no messy bits no fluff no scuffs no uneven polishing it'll feel like you're wearing something you found in an old antique shop yet you're going to have something with a modern movement and a warranty how fabulous is that i hope the uh, stats and specs have got you going a bit but don't don't quit on me yet there's still a lot more to discuss with this piece so i'm going to continue on with that now before i go there's one last thing i forgot to mention Guy Pass. he has not been forgotten those of you who are fans of the channel know he's an incredibly valuable member of the team you need to know how much old timer weighs not even 50 grams light as a feather So now we know more of the details in terms of what you're getting for your money. What do I like and what do I think it could be improved upon on this piece? I very much like the styling. I really do. You're going to see macros pop out on my, on my B-roll head just to show you the details which are what makes something special. And that is for this watch. It is that dial. I'm, I'm so glad I went for this cream dial. It's got gorgeous grainy texture. It's just like eggshell. And as you can see from the close-ups when you see the logo and, and and the raised arabics they just look stunning and the way they play with the light it's fantastic so the black raised lettering when you get some shadowing even on a bright sunny day you get gorgeous shadows being cast on the dial and that's just mesmerizing it's lovely to see and combine that with that gorgeous three millimeters domed mineral crystal talk about bounce the light around and bend the the uh numerals bend the arabics they just it looks so fun and exciting just to see something that that's so small compact elegant watch which doesn't first of all doesn't look too small i don't think it looks lost or like a kid's watch on my wrist seven inch wrist and i like the fact it's just got the right proportions to give you that feel of vintage but without being so tiny it's got a lot more heft to it than the very similarly sized timex marlin for example which is of a similar era maybe a bit newer but we've got a watch with that elegant round case with very compact little lugs and a beautifully polished case it's got all these little elements which piece together to give it that vibe which we're looking for but it's no means perfect i do like the loom it, it doesn't last very long I'm, i see it lasts about five minutes before it's almost you know imperceptible but at least it has decent enough loom it's not terrible i mean i've seen a lot worse definitely but I, maybe it could have done with being a bit more I think the thing that showcases this watch really is that the textures involved, the very, very smooth, beautiful polishing, the fit and the finish, everything. The, the main tactile thing on this watch is that screw down crown, which is faultless and very smooth, no grittiness. The winding action is what you'd expect with an NH35. It's smooth and light, so that's that's acceptable. And I just love that dial. The texture is so fun to have some textures to the dial that allows uh, play with the light that is not just a sunburst or something with teak to effect or a waffle design and things like that it's nice to have something that has got a different level of depth to it and it's just lovely matte finish as well it's, it's gorgeous it really is interesting as well and it contrasts well with that sort of orangey loom you get on the hands and around on the indices so it's, it's very clever but there are a few little downsides i mean don't get me wrong it's not it's not going to be perfect i mean i'm not going to just just sing the praise of this watch because i've been kindly sent it for free there's obviously going to be downsides first one is the main thing in terms of getting it to fit you i have a seven inch wrist the straps it come with they just don't fit so it needs to be longer if you've got a bigger wrist but one thing i would also recommend is you i'm going to just quickly pop up a couple of pictures of, of the watch on a couple of different straps i sell which are longer 18 mil lug width so it's an easy strap choice and size to find and i've chosen straps which i think complement the design of this piece so we've got the army green it works nice contrast against that cream dial very sort of earth tones they really they go to well together and the same applies if you want a little bit more of, a, sort of an interesting bit of playfulness with the strap i've gone for the new no time to die strap which i sell it's a good seller you've got the lovely cream stripe on that with a bit of silver in there as well and black and they're all colors that feature on the watch cream dial silver on the case and black on the uh, arabic so you've got something that's going to complement the design of the watch so that's something to consider with this piece it is a bit of a strap monster you could put it on a nice 
tan or a black leather strap, 18 mil again, lug width is easy to get those kind of things. So another thing I'm not so keen on is that date window. If you've got black Arabics going around, it'd be good if they could have got a hold of the black date wheel NX35 movement maybe, or just given an option of it to be without having a date window to have some more symmetry with the design and keep it in more uh, vintage look. So I can't find much more criticism really. I've been very thorough. I mean, I know people say, oh, I wouldn't mind a bit of Dome Sapphire in there and maybe better loom. And again, the strap I've said is a bit too short. Again, the other thing maybe is to consider would be the price. I mean, it's, it's $278. It's quite a lot of money. But the big flip side to that is this is a micro brand, Japanese company, made in Japan. It's all in-house in terms of all the processes and manufacturing and everything involved. There's, not, there's no middlemen. That's part of what um, Kenji promotes as one of their USPs as well. Creating a product that is in-house and made and marketed and everything without having to have any huge amounts of costs laid out for other people getting involved. So you can have something that's got those USPs of being Japanese made and in-house with those higher um, assembly costs, etc., without having to whack the price up. So that's a really good positive. You can say you're wearing a Japanese made what from a micro brand company for less than $300. But I would like maybe the price to be a little bit lower, but then they do offer, if you really are on a tighter budget, quartz variants as well. There's plenty, absolutely, buckets to choose from different colors different strap choices there's different types of quartz movement some with the small seconds hands for example so you are sport for choice so that's another great positive so there you have it guys in summary now does it succeed at being a excellent tribute to watches of old vintage pieces yes definitely it's definitely got the look definitely feels like an old watch when you look at it on your wrist helped by its compact size the different play on textures, the dome crystal, uh, all the aesthetic points. It could be refined a little bit better, maybe with a, a, a date-free version, no date window, that kind of thing. But otherwise, it's gorgeous. I mean, it's, it's just what I'm looking for in, in terms of something for the collection, because it's something that is modern, with the modern reliability and the warranty, etc. from a micro brand that's not going to charge you an arm and a leg. It's already got started. It's not something you have to buy a Kickstarter variation. It's a it's a brand that's up and running, ready to go, and you can go and buy their watches. So the link will be in the description. But thanks for watching, guys. It's been a real pleasure sharing this with you. And I think it'd be good to see what else comes from this company in the near future. It's, a, it's been a really enjoyable review to make, and I really hope you've enjoyed it too. And if you have, thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, definitely hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you very soon in the next video. Bye for now.